वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन फाजी सेट एरिथमेटिक एंड लॉजिक इफ यू रिमेम्बर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फाजी सेट्स विच ट्राइज टू रिप्रेजेंट द इनहेरेंट वेगनेस विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू सर्टन कॉन्सेप्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव गिवन difference between a circle and an ellipse the basic notion whether it is a circle or ellipse essentially depends upon the ratio of the major axis and minor axis the closer it is to 1 the more it appears to be a circle and if that ratio say b by a if i call it b and if i call it a the smaller it is the more it resembles towards an ellipse so a shape which need not be a circle but appears somewhat elongated so some of us may feel it is closer to a circle some may feel it is closer to an ellipse so how do we distinguish between them we look at membership function which is a function of can be defined on the feature b by a that is ratio of minor axis by major axis as it is minor upon major it can never exceed 1 so perhaps one can think that up to the value of say point 8 say point 8 to 1 it may look like a circle its membership to the class circle will be higher than the membership to the class ellipse and below point 8 slowly the membership for ellipse will increase similar examples rectangle versus square this is a square on the other hand this is clearly a rectangle what about this although its horizontal sides are slightly bigger than the vertical slides it still resembles more of a square than a rectangle on the other hand if this length is significantly more than the vertical length then it resembles more of a rectangle therefore again we can take the ratio of vertical length upon horizontal length if we call them v and h so if v by h is close to 1 membership for sq 
square is high and further it goes away from one the more it looks like a rectangle. Example, if V by H equal to say 0 0.5, it will look like this if v by h is equal to say 2 then it will look like this clearly both of them look like rectangles therefore we can define membership to square as a function of v by h and if we plot it we expect a graph like this when v by h is equal to 1, then membership is 1, but as we go away from 1, the membership to square decreases. In a similar way, consider the following. figures so this looks like a cylinder on the other hand if the diameter is very small in comparison with the height then we call it a tube on the other hand if diameter is very big in comparison with the height we may call it a disc therefore given a figure with two parameters diameter and height as before we can define membership functions to the three classes. Question is how to define a membership function? One I have shown that has a triangular shape, say for example with respect to square which is a triangular shape, this is the vertex and this is the base of that triangle. There may be several other shapes that I have shown in my last class with respect to weather. If you look at the different shapes, 
you might have noticed that if it is a cold, then it may have this shape. If it is pleasant, it may have this type of shape and if it is hot, it may have a shape like this. So, this is hot, this is pleasant and this is cold. So, depending upon the shape, this has a pi shape, this is called S and this is reverse of S, you can say. Once the concept of fuzzy set is clear, the question comes how to perform set operations on fuzzy sets. When we talk about a crisp set, the standard operations that we look at one is union, one is intersection. another is complement. Given two sets A and B, we know that A union B contain all the elements of A and B. Similarly, intersection contains all the elements that belong to both A and B and complement of a set X in terms of a universal set U is all the elements which belong to U, but do not belong to X. How to define these operations mathematically? we use the concept of characteristic function. Consider universal set U. Let A and B be two subsets of U. The characteristic function chi a of x is equal to 1 if x belongs to a 0 otherwise. Similarly, chi b of x is equal to 1 if x belongs to b and 0 otherwise. Example, u is equal to 1, 2, 
3 up to 10. Let A contained in U be 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 and B contained in U be 1, 3, 6 and 9. Therefore, chi A of 1 is equal to 0, chi B of 1 is equal to 1, chi A of 2 is equal to 1, chi B of 2 is equal to 0, chi A of 6 is equal to 1, chi B of 6 is equal to 1 as it belongs to both of them. In a similar way, we can compute the characteristic function with respect to all the elements of u namely 1, 2, 3 up to 10. Therefore, what is A union B? This is, is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9 and 10. How do you compute it? We can easily see that for any element x belonging to u, its membership or its characteristic function with respect to A union B is equal to maximum of chi A of x and chi B of x. Say for example, with respect to 1, it is 0 here and 1 here. Since the maximum of these two is 1, it belongs to A union B. Similarly, with respect to 2, it is 1 and 0, therefore the maximum is 1, therefore it belongs to A union B. With respect to 6, it is 1 here and 1 here, therefore it also belongs to A union B. In fact, we can check that all these belong to A union B and we can get therefore the membership function to A union B by taking the maximum of these two values. What about chi of A intersection B? X belongs to A intersection B if it belongs to both of them. Therefore, we can think of minimum of chi A x comma chi B x. If we look at these two sets, the only common of them is 6 and we see that chi A 6 is equal to 1 and chi B 6 is equal to 1. Therefore, the minimum is 1 and therefore, chi A intersection B of 6 is 1 defined by this function. For all other elements, you will see either chi A x is 0 or chi B x is 0 or both of them 0 say something like 7 which neither belongs to A nor to B and therefore, it cannot belong to A intersection B. What about chi A complement of x? If x belongs to A, its, character, its value is 1, therefore, 
its value to a complement should be 0, which is, is equal to 1 minus 1. If it is, if it does not belong to a, then it will belong to a complement and therefore, its chi value should be 1 minus 0. Therefore, together we can write chi a complement of x is equal to 1 minus chi a of x. Okay. Zade extended the similar concept with respect to membership functions to describe union, intersection and complement. Therefore, with respect to fuzzy sets, mu A union B of x is defined as maximum of mu A x and mu B x mu A intersection B of x is equal to minimum of mu A x and mu B x and mu A complement of x is equal to 1 minus mu A x. If you are confused, let me just say that by mu x x, we mean the membership of the element x to the set x. Example, a is equal to 1 by 2 plus 0.5 by 3 plus 0.3 by 4 plus 0.2 upon 5. What does it mean? It means that the membership of 2 to the set A is 1, membership of 3 to the set A is 0 0.5, for 4 it is 0 0.3 and for 5 it is 0 0.2. B is equal to 0 0.5 upon 2 plus 0 0.7 upon 3 plus 0 0.2 upon 4 plus 0 0.4 upon 5. Therefore, a complement is equal to as you know, it is 1 minus the membership. Therefore, for 2, it is going to be 0. For 3, it will remain 0. 0.5. For 4, it is going to be 0. 0.7. And for 5, it is going to be 0. 0.8. Similarly, B complement is equal to 0 0.5 by 2 plus 0 0.3 upon 3 plus 0 0.8 upon 4 plus 0 0.6 upon 5. Therefore, what is A union B? We can define the membership as the maximum of the two memberships of A and B. Therefore, it is coming out to be 1 for 2, 0.7 for 3, 
point three for four and point four for five. What about a intersection B? It is the minimum of the membership to A and B, therefore, it is coming out to be 0.5 upon 2 plus 0.5 upon 3 plus 0.2 upon 4 plus 0.2 upon 5. What about De Morgan's law? A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement and A intersection B complement is equal to A complement union B complement. Question comes whether these two properties hold for a fuzzy set. Let us see, we have A union B is equal to 1 by 2 plus 0 0.7 upon 3 plus 0 0.3 upon 4 plus 0 0.4 upon 5. Therefore, A union B complement is equal to 0 by 2 plus 0 0.3 3 plus 0.74 plus 0.65. We have A complement is equal to 0 by 2 plus 0.5 by 3 plus 0.7 by 4 plus 0.8 by 5 and B complement is equal to 0.5 by 2 plus 0.3 by 3 plus 0.8 by 4 plus 0.6 by 5. Therefore, A complement intersection B complement is equal to, we know that we have to take the minimum of these two is equal to 0 by 2 plus 0 0.3 by 3 plus 0 0.7 by 4 plus 0 0.6 by 5 and we can see that a union B complement is this and A complement intersection B complement is this and we can see that they are same. In a similar way, A complement union B complement is equal to, we have to take the maximum of these memberships. So, it is coming out to be 0 0.5 by 2 plus 0 0.5 by 3 plus 0 0.3 by 4 plus 0.6 by 5. Since a complement is this and B complement is this. If we take the union of these, we will get the maximum of individual memberships. 
Therefore, we can see that A complement union B complement is this. What is A intersection B complement? We have computed A intersection B to be like this. Therefore, A intersection B complement is equal to 0.5 by 2 plus 0.5 by 3 plus 0.8 by 4 plus 0.8 by 5. For each of the elements, we are taking 1 minus the membership value. So, it is coming out to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And if we compare these two, we find that they are same. Therefore, we can say that De Morgan's law hold for fuzzy sets. But it is not true that all such properties of crisp sets actually hold for fuzzy as well. For example, we know A intersection A complement is equal to phi, but with respect to fuzzy sets, in A intersection A complement, some members may have non-zero membership values. Let me give some definitions. The support of a fuzzy set is is the crisp set that contains all elements of A such that mu A x is greater than 0. Say for example, u is equal to 1, 2, 3 up to 10. Suppose A is equal to 1 by 1 plus 0.5 by 2 plus 0.7 by 3 plus 0.9 by 8. If we take this example, so this is a U, we have defined a fuzzy set A on U. Therefore, support of A is equal to the crisp set 1, 2, 3 and 8. For all other elements of U, 
their membership to A is 0. Core. The core of a fuzzy set A is the crisp set containing all the elements such that membership of A, all the elements x such that membership of x in A is equal to 1. Therefore, in this case, we can see that the code is 1. Therefore, when A is equal to 1 upon 1 plus 0.5 upon 2 plus 0.7 upon 3 plus 0.9 upon 8, code of A is equal to 1. The height of a fuzzy set is supremum over all x mu a x. Again, the set is called A. Therefore, supremum over all the membership of supremum over the membership of all the elements of x is called the height of the fuzzy set. Question is, why supremum? If it is a discrete, then of course, the maximum of the different membership values is considered to be the height. But consider u is equal to 0, 0,1 union 1,2. So, I am looking at a set defined over the interval 0 to 2, but I exclude the point 1. Suppose mu a x is defined as x if x less than 1 and 2 minus x if x is greater than 1, then we get this membership. So, between 0 to 1, it is this line but it does not touch 1. Therefore, it will not be included there. Similarly, between 1 to 2. So, if you look at it for no x, mu a x is equal to 1. At the same time, we cannot take any alpha, there does not exist alpha, there does not exist epsilon greater than 0 such that for all x mu a x is less than 1 minus epsilon. If you take epsilon here, 
you can see that still there will be some x for which the membership is greater than 1 minus epsilon. Therefore, actually if you want to look at the height, we need to go to the supremum of these things which is going to be 1 in this case. The scalar cardinality of a fuzzy set A is defined as sigma over x mu A x. That is, we are adding up the membership values of all the elements belonging to the set x. A fuzzy set A is said to be contained in a fuzzy set B if mu A x is less than equal to mu B of x. That means, for all the elements of x, the membership to A is less than equal to the membership to B. What happens? if that is not true. Example, A is equal to 0.2 of A, 0.5 by B plus point eight C plus one upon D plus zero upon E and B is equal to point six by A plus point six by B plus point six by C plus point six by D plus point six by E. Therefore, if we look at it, we can see that for all the elements, it is neither the membership values of A is smaller than the membership value of B, nor it is true that for all values, for all the elements of B, the membership is less than the membership of A. Therefore, neither A is fully contained in B, nor B is fully contained in A. In such a case, we define the degree of subsethood the degree of subsethood of A in B is defined as S A comma B, which is, is equal to 1 upon scalar cardinality of A to into scalar cardinality of A minus summation over all x maximum of 0 and mu a x minus mu b x. So, what is happening? If mu a x is greater than mu b x, then this element is 
mu a x minus mu b x. But if mu b x is greater than mu a x, then this becomes negative. Therefore, we are getting 0. Therefore, let us understand what is the subset hood of A in B. So, according to the definition, the first scalar cardinality of A is equal to 0 0.2 plus 0.5 plus 0.8 plus 1 is equal to 2.5. Therefore, what is this quantity with respect to the five elements? So, when we consider A max of 0 and mu A x minus mu B x is equal to 0. mu b x is more than mu a x. Therefore, here it is 0, here also it is 0. In this case, we get 0 0.2, in this case we get 0 0.4 and in this case we get 0. Therefore, what we are getting for b it is 0, for c it is 0 0.2, for d it is 0 0.4 and for E equal to 0. Therefore, subset hood of A in B is equal to 1 upon 2.5 into 2.5 minus 0 plus 0 plus 0.2 plus 0.4 plus 0 is equal to 1 upon 2.5 into 2.5 minus 0 0.6 is equal to 1.9 upon 2.5. We can calculate it in a slightly different way. Consider A intersection B. We know that with respect to standard intersection, which is the minimum the intersection, the membership values come as the minimum of these corresponding memberships. So, therefore, the A intersection B in this case is going to be 0 0.2 for A, 0 0.5 by B, 0 0.6 by C plus 0 0.6 by D plus 0 by E is equal to 0 0.7 plus 0 0.6, 1.3 plus 0 0.6 is equal to 1.9 is scalar cardinality. Therefore, subset hood of a in B is equal to scalar cardinality of A intersection B divided by scalar cardinality of A. So, this is another way of defining subset hood with respect to fuzzy sets. Okay, students, I stop here today. In the next class, I shall start with different types of membership functions.
and also I will introduce you to the interesting property and very important property of alpha cut with respect to fuzzy sets. Thank you. Thank you.